Good evening, men's fellowship. It's been a good one. Sons in the midst of global Christ. Who are these sons we are talking about? Straight away, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So who are these sons we are talking about? Say, as many that are led by the Spirit of God. That is you and me. We are the sons. What's crisis? Crisis is a time of intense difficulty or danger. No small danger. Intense difficulty or danger. That's crisis. It, ought, it means, in another way, a difficult or dangerous situation that needs serious attention. A difficult or dangerous situation that needs serious attention. In some of the things Pastor Femi shared with us are evidently very serious issues that need attention. Things like unemployment and Government corruption and malnutrition and terrorism and violence in the midst of everything. And these are the things that characterize the environment and the seasons we live in. Amen. Exodus chapter 1 verse 22. And there is a way crisis impacts on the male gender. Because we have very significant role in the agenda of God. When Pharaoh was attacking the children of Israel in Egypt, he gave a command. He said, every son which is born, you shall cast into the river. And every daughter, you shall save alive. Every son, you shall cast into the river. There was a way the Egyptians, you know, attacked the male gender, because it was the procreating gender. Are we together? And they said, all their daughters you can save a life. And that means over a period of time, if that type of agenda stands, Israel will go into extinction because they will only have seed receivers, but they will not have seed giver. So the enemy is looking at cry, you know, destroying the seed giver, and it targeted the sons and in Acts chapter 7, verse 17 to 20, Acts 7, 17 to 20, the Bible is speaking about that moment. The Bible said, when the time of the promise drew near which God has sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Continue. Till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers making them expose their babies so that they might not leave. And verse 20 say, at this time, Moses was born. It does not matter what's happening on the face of the earth. It does not matter how intense life becomes. One thing that continues to happen is a command of God that men must what? Multiply and face the earth. And, and what? Replenish the earth. It doesn't matter whether there is... Now, uh, it doesn't matter... Every type of seasons has come on the face of the earth. One thing has continued. Man kept procreating. The challenge is that there are certain people that will not be born into certain seasons. So when Moses was born, he was born into a season of conflict. So Moses will have parents that will describe for him what it means to be in Egypt at a time. At a time, being in Egypt, they dwelt in the best part of the land. You remember? They dwelt in Goshen. But when they are telling Moses that, it will be a distant history that he cannot relate with because he was born in a different time. And the time he was born is in the midst of a crisis. 
So when our parents talk to us about this type of time we are, and they tell us that in this same nation that all of us are running to get out from, that they had four or five jobs waiting for them when they left school. You can't relate it because there was a time Israel was the greatest thing in Egypt because they had a man called Joseph. But in the time of Moses, they were the greatest pain in Egypt because there was another pharaoh that wanted them all. It's the same land, but something has changed. Are we together? And I think we can relate to it now because our times and the type of times we are born affects us. Glory to God. Look at this. Go, go, go with me to 2 Chronicles 15, verse 3 to 7. 2 Chronicles 15, 3 to 7. For a long time, Israel has been without a true God, without a teaching priest, without the law. But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, it was found by them. In those times, there was no peace to the one who went out or to the one who came in. For great turmoil was upon the inhabitants of the land. Nation was destroyed by nation, city by city. God troubled them with every adversity. Verse 7. But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak for your work will be rewarded. You can't give in to faith of the type of crisis of your season. In the midst of the crisis of those seasons, there was a word. What was the word? You be strong. Somebody says, you be strong. The Bible says it was a sort of time that there was no peace to the one that went out or the one that came in. There's hardly any direction you want to take in our time that is not trouble. Whether you want to run out of this country and take your PhD and B, if they are not careful, and begin to be a taxi driver. Or we want to stay with me and look at the hopelessness. There is actually very few decisions you can take that are fail proof that no matter what you, that when you take decision, everything will be solved. The people who ran out have no peace because they are now troubled about the type of place they are raising their family. The people who stay in have no peace because of the exceeding mega inflation that's happening in our land. It's such a time that we are. And the Bible said, you be strong for your work will be rewarded. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, describing the ends of the time. He said, at that time, Michael shall stand up, a great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. Trouble progresses. There were certain things people called trouble 20 years ago that is no trouble anymore. I mean, I can't imagine some people who are saying Nigeria was hard. I just, in 21 years of democracy, or well, it's 1999 to 20, 22 years, we have not built God mainland bridge. They built it under the military that we were angry, frustrated us. In 22 years, the most significant project delivered by this plan of leadership is Africa National State. I hope you know. No, they've not delivered. Abuja National Stadium. The ones they are trying to deliver now is the trains. In 22 years, they've not finished Lagos by the express week. And our father said they had problems. They didn't have problems. They drove, I mean, I'm used to my father driving from Ajahuta, I'm worried all those days, and you know, I, I met a man that told me, you know, 
he used to work in Joss and his family in the bad and he used to almost come every week. They start, sometimes they just even drive in the night. Now when you are traveling, then you are want to go to Elisha, they say, please go in the afternoon. Did they have problem? Now they thought they had problem, but the Bible told us here, there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, which means there was trouble, but the one that is coming now, we even make that one the dwarf, even to that time, and at that time your people shall be believers. Everyone that is written in the book. I thought you would say better amen. Matthew 24 verse 21. Describing the time of the end. The time that you and I are living in. Matthew 24 21. Said there will be great tribulation. Such as not been. Since the beginning of the world. Or until this time. Nor ever shall be. And some people will be born. In fact, give me the previous Two verses before 21 of Matthew 24. Let's go to 20. For what to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, pray that your flight will not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, which means even in the midst of that amount of trouble, there will still be procreation. So there will be people born into such times. That when a generation is describing their trouble, they will say, you people don't have trouble. And I want to tell you that the worst crisis Nigeria has ever had is the one we are going through. It has never been this bad. I'm telling you the truth. They said, this is the only time we are almost fragmenting with the, as though we are at the point of civil war. This is the time where people cannot allow their children to have national youth service outside of their region. You don't get me. I mean, national youth service was one thing that people, you know, you know so that you can just go to Aduna and you, know, you just have an experience. But now, you school in Oshu, you serve in Oyo, and you don't know there is crisis. And you can't blame them. Can people invest that amount of money in raising children? I read in the, in the newspapers this morning, as to justifying their periodic strike. So one of the reasons why they've been striking is because the federal government have proposed a one million naira tuition fee for every student. My, you know I didn't have problem. You know my highest school fees in 2002 when I graduated, 6,000 naira. That's non-indigent. So if I'm talking, no crutch takes that anymore. I'm just trying to show you that uh, when I say sons, in the midst of, and you know the funny thing is that it's not just here. It's global. Last night I was talking to one of my friends who relocated to Canada, and I was talking to her, I said, even the work I'm doing now, he said, there are bills here. Bills. So I looked at that. I said, you are lying. I said, I know how much you sent to me some few months ago. He said, that one is for my Nigerian money. I didn't say. It's not, he said, you think it's 10%? I said, please. I don't think. He said, Pastor, I'm still maintaining my Nigerian job when I'm in Canada. He said, because that job is what is making me to have economic balance. He said, because if I don't have that Nigerian job, coupled with what I'm doing in Canada, I will not be able to pay my bills in Canada. You don't get it. I'm saying, this is a discussion of last night. So I said, so you don't, he said, even during weekend, that's when I do most of my Nigerian backlog job. <laughs> he said, yes, he said, the only reason I was able to call you because they said they are doing Halloween. He said, and I told my boss, I don't do Halloween, so I stayed at home. He said, that's when I had time to call you. The global crisis. Men have always been people who provide. But if they have ever been provider, it has intensified now. Now whom chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. This, I'm trying to identify reasons why it is a crisis moment. 
Nahum chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Where is the dwelling place of the lion? The feeding place of the long lions. Where the lion walked, somebody say walk, and the lioness and the lion cub, and no one made them afraid, verse 12. The lion tore in pieces enough for his cubs, killed for his lioness, filled his caves with prey, and his den with flesh. It described the family of the lion. There is the lion, the alpha male, there is the lioness, and there is their cub. But the entire destiny of that pride is determined by one lion. So if you can look at the lion, you can even look at the pride of lions. There can be 20 lioness in the pride of lion, but there is only one alpha male. And the reason is because the lion tore in pieces enough for his corpse, healed for his lioness. Are we together? Are we together? So as a man, you are the provider for your wife and what? Your children. And nowadays for your brains. And you can't just say, I've done enough. I've done as much. Look at the word. He tore in pieces enough. Somebody say enough. Which means you can't say, I've tried my best. If the cops have children ever spoken to you that they are hungry before, do they ever know what is in stock? They are never concerned. They can say, I'm hungry at any time. So you don't just provide. You provide enough. Let me tell you what that means. When you provide, you don't just provide. You see, they, they can get to a point where they say, I'm not eating right. I want to eat. And you are looking at them. You better thank God that you can even eat. And until you are able to just not just provide, but provide according to desire, maybe it's not described as enough. And that's part of the crisis moment. So one day, Sometimes, months ago, I would leave the office. Michael was always still in the office. So sometimes we would just drive. As we are going home, we just drive into a supermarket and I decide to pick a few things. So uh, just a you know, um, tin of milk there. And I know he's observing me. And sometimes by the time I'm paying, I paid half of his salary. So he began to think. I know he didn't talk, but I know the thought was in me. So somebody will just pack, take uh, some soap, some, uh, and everything will just, and just uh, then buy flour. I like guess looking at it. And go easy. When that one was saying it, he can't have come. Compared to the trouble. Time they were singing it. One dollar was like uh, probably even one naira or a bit of. Today, one dollar is five seventy five. Go oh, easy, that you job off. And you know those days, as bad as it was, our ladies were willing to feed their children on kababa. Sugar. Today. When you say this one too is meek, they say no. Pick one, pick one. The ones that are considered are pick one to tip. That's considered pick. You don't know. The ones that really want to touch the heart. Eh? Thank you. I know you will help me. The funny thing is that these things keep increasing, but your salary and the value does not increase. So provisionally, we are in the crisis moment to tear enough for the cubs, for the lionesses. Number two reason why we are in the crisis moment is because even our support systems are failing. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17 to 20. Our support systems, including church. 
Look at what these people say. Still our eyes failed us, watching plainly for our help. In our watching, we watched for a nation that could not save us. They tracked our steps so that we could not walk in our street. Our end was so near, our days was over. For our end had come. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the heavens. They pursued us on the mountains. They lay in wait for us in the wilderness. Verse 20. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of God, was caught in the abyss of whom we said, under his shadow we will live among the nations. So they looked at this anointed of God and said, well, as long as he's there, we can have some what? Some shield, some covering. But suddenly, that point that they looked for covering was taken by the same net. Religion is not ideal anymore. It's business. So the place where we should find even the support system of faith, the anointed have been caught in the net of the nations. And it's, much pro it's a greater problem when what should be our support system fails on its own too. We know that demand is increasing. How many of us remember Exodus chapter 5, verse 4 to 20? I'm just rushing. Exodus 5, 4 to 20. Pharaoh said, these people are idle. That's why they are asking to go worship. So this is what you should do. Stop giving them straw to make brick. But tell them to what? To bring the same amount of brick. So before, they were asking them to make 200 bricks. And they will supply them with straw. But now don't supply them with straw. Now, you know what I'm talking about? You go to, I know, I remember a time Pastor Emmy told me, he's doing three people's job. All in the name of his remote work. Do you know people now are discovering that that remote work is even more problem? Because somebody, I was trying to get it from somebody. Why? He said, you know, formerly, when you are not at the office, no meeting can hold. But now by remote work, you can have a meeting by 9.30 p.m. Anybody can invade your time. And they are demanding the same result with lesser time and lesser opportunities given to you. And so, you know, there's an intense demand. The Bible says because of that, the children of Israel scattered at, ab, across the land. They were gathering. They couldn't fight strong. They were gathering trouble. But they can't stay where they are. What they were gathering was not sufficient, but they can't stay where they are. You don't get it. And they looked at Moses. See the nonsense you have caused for us. One of the reasons why you see that every moment people find it easy to draw church is that frustration. Even the things that does not concern church, they will just. It was the Egyptian taskmasters that was beating them. It was Moses they were facing. Many years ago, I was in the world and one guy was, he said, you can't pack here, you can't pack here, was disturbing. I just looked at him. I said, am I the governor for stretching you? Not the governor. Huh? Am I the is it not you that vote your leader? I said, this is where I will pack. I mean, Nigeria is like you are. Have you discovered that Nigerians are naturally just aggressive? <laughs> I went to Italy. People will say, if you come to some way, there are offices there. there are, I went to do one, uh, what do you call it? Photo shoot somewhere. <laughs> they do. Ostroma is waiting for you not to park anywhere. Yet yeah, businesses are. Where will you park? Then if you now enter petrol station, the petrol station man is saying you can't park here. Everybody is looking for. Sometimes they are not even looking for, for money. They are just hungry. Including you. Sometimes some of you, Monday morning, 9 a.m., you are already hungry. 9 a.m. Anybody that is knocking on your door, what is what? What? I want to show you another one that is an intense point. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 3. A lot of times, from verse 1 to 12, he spoke about two things that are important. He said, it was describing, it was actually a word given to women. He said, women, their, their, their adorning should not be of the outward, but of the inward. Then he said, like Sarah. Who called her husband Lord? Say Lord. But he now gave you a responsibility. He said about husband, you must relate with them as 
like relating with a weaker vessel. And this is a challenge. The women that are in our lives want us to be tough. Sarah called her Lord, but he expected him to relate with her as weaker. They want you to be a leader, but they want you to be a peer. Think about what I just said. They want you to be a leader, but they want you to be able to. They want you tough. They want you hard, but they want you tender. Think about what I just said. They want when there is wahala, they want you there. But on the other side, they want you tender. They want to be able to talk to you. Yet they want you to be able to take initiative. You need grace to be a lord. And yet, to out, this is a strange lordship. The lordship that handles the weaker vessel. Understand it. That is one of the crises of our marriages. Women want guys that know what they are doing. They can't just stand there. You know, I'm telling you. Because when you begin to tell them, I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. One day they say, I'm, you remember, it's, 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 it's a mixture. In that same scripture, he said you must handle them with understanding. He said because they are fellow heirs of the grace of life. So they must be fellows Yet you must be leaders. So finding that balance is becoming a major crisis in the world today. If you are too tough and you cannot relate as a peer, this thing wants to be until we discuss it together. In fact, they, sometimes they want to tell you what you should do and what you must not do. They can even want to tell you what, what, how to talk to your pastor now. When, when, when we are ready to talk, we will go and talk to him. You know, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Because it's a challenge. And sometimes most of us don't even know how to handle it. And it's not bad. It's, it's, it's just, I'm just trying to show you that we have provisional challenge. We have support system failure. We have demands on us. We have emotional pressures. Then we have a lot of expectation on us. Are you still following me? Second Samuel 10, 9 to 12. The Bible says Joab was fighting a battle. Then he looked before him and he saw that the battle was before him and he looked behind him and he saw that the battle was behind him. Then he began to speak to his people. He said, let us be strong. Let us show ourselves as men. Because at the end of everything, no matter what is before and behind, you must be a man. The pressure of expectation. Thank God for all the teachings. You must be the priest of your house. You must be the provider of your house. You must be, you must be what the other thing. You must be the protector. You must love. You must be tender. You must raise your children. Your children, they what they become. Everything on you. Problem is that the time you have to go make the money is clashing with the time you have to make raise the children. And you must be everything. And if you are not careful, that's a crisis. Because if anyone gets uh, out of line, it will destroy every other thing. The sons in the midst of global crisis. In Genesis chapter 4, we saw something. The first children that was born in the world were sons. Genesis 4. Adam knew Eve and he brought forth a son and he called him Cain. From verse 1. He said, I've acquired a man from the Lord. Yes. And now, and she bore again and his brother Abel, and he was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. 
after we were introduced to their name, what was the next thing we were introduced to? What they did? Suddenly, man has become, most of us have lost who we are to what we do. Because it's become a life of meeting expectations, needs. All we know about Cain. Cain! Tiller of God. You get that Cain was gentle. Cain was lovely. Cain sings. Cain, tiller of God. Ebe, shepherd. And you know the story that Cain brought the sacrifice, was not accepted, then Cain became angry. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, what was the first recorded conversation between two men? Now Cain talked with his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field. What did he talk to his brother about? The field. The first recorded conversation between two men. Every time guys gather today, what do they talk about? How many of us can sit and be talking about our emotions? Hmm? Talk to me. Is that what you know? Ah, uh, this your hair. This your. Even if you say, who is your baba? It's not because you want to. It's 10 seconds. What do we invest time on? He talked to him and they, were, they went to the field. And if you have friends that don't talk to you about the field, they seem to waste your time. If you have a church that does not seem to be talking about the field, and do you know why you like talking about the field? Because of the type of pressures that I've described. There are so many emotional problems, so many demands on you. Are we together? We are born in such a time of trouble that has never been on the face of the earth. Some few months ago, my father called me. He has never, he just said, We don't talk much. So he just said, How are you? How is today? No problem. I'm happy. Always, I don't want answer. No problem. Then he said, You know, then. What do you people do with that day? Suddenly, I picked something in that conversation. That he looked at how the decadence of the nation. Where I have a child in primary one, school fees is almost 200,000. Primary one. I know my father can relate. So he wanted, so when, when guys talk, to even elders, they want to, they, that's why when you go to your fathers, you discover that there's hardly any way you talk without it coming into an economic talk. They handle the lionesses and the cubs. And they know how sufficiency affects the mood of the house. That until the gods feel that there's flesh enough. And the lioness is, your cave will not look like it is peaceful. They look at this. So how do you people do that? Yeah. It is where? It is where? Man, when I first got to Ibadan, the greatest fight my father had with me was he couldn't understand what it means to be called, number one. But number two, he was finding an economic leverage for me. So he told me that I should start writing books. He said, all those your messages. Put it in. I understood what he was trying to do. I remember one day, I was driving my wife to work, those early days. Then he called me. Sometimes he would call me as early as 7.30 a.m. Then he would say, I say everything. Then he would end the conversation by, those your books, you your shot. I just told him one day, I said, Daddy, I'm the one that received the call. 
He was shocked. He then said, ah. so I can't I talk? I said, don't worry. Then I, my wife was very happy. Why did you have to talk? I said, don't worry. So I called him and said, Daddy, have you seen that not all churches do the same thing? Some churches build university. Some build hospital. I said, when people do what they don't have grace to do, they will fail you. Now, he was looking for an example. At least, if he cannot understand preaching, he can understand writing. So, after many years, when I wrote Anne, he still spoke to me this year. I said, he would, sometimes he would just call me, Professor, something saw your book and he was commending it. He can make a connect. And he'd be like, and he would ask me, this, are people buying it? <laughs> because he's a man. And he does that thing, you people have done. But there is no food at all. So I had to tell him, don't worry. I said, people are buying it. It is where people are buying it. Because I look at myself, his book, I want to use to eat, I would have been dead. Glory to God. So James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. So I've told you the type of conversation that occurred between the, f- the first two guys in the Bible. There was a conversation around the field. Why? The field served the two of them. One was a tiller of the ground. The other was what? A shepherd. It's the other's farmer's crisis. Again, who did it? That's where I started. Ada, Abel, Cain, Farmer. All of them conf- looking for what? The scarce resources of the land. So the Bible says in James 4.13, Come on now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, listen, and spend a year there, mm-hmm. what else? Buy and sell, and what? Now this is the way guys talk. When people say they want to do something, what is the next thing they do? People ask them, what is the prospect? So he said, we will go to such and such a place. You don't say I want to go to somewhere. One lady was leaving our church recently for the UK, so I asked her, I said, can you walk here? See, because I don't believe it's already just going. Then you are sitting. It's a it's right. It's right. Now the lady was, so my mama was telling me how she was reporting to one of our friends, where she stays. If she puts on too much light, hey, put off that light. It's not Nigeria. So you people here, the way you put on light, we know we are defrauding them. Uh, I do this. She knows now. So they say, we say, we'll go to such and such a city. And there are discussions about cities now. Nobody wants to say just anywhere. People want to go to certain places. If you have a chance, where will you go? Which sort of city? Eh? You are. Euro, <laughs> we sit. Anyone? Mr. Adebayo? Canada? Dotu? Ere Lushi? I know Akitude has faith. Akitude has faith. Akitude? Eh? Canada? Now, I know you people don't want to go and play there. After we have determined city, what, what's the next thing? Spend a year there. That is, understand the system. Then what next? Buy and sell. What next? Akore Okodele. Then I will go, what do I want? This is not tourism. This is not, we want to, this is not sightseeing. What's the Bible describing there? The orientation that governs our movement is we are looking for ultimately for a place that is going to bring Profit. Why do we need profit? Because there is crisis. Are you following me? Now, look at it. Look at the next verse. Where else you do not know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? It is even vapor that appears for a little time and vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, 
If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this and that. But now you boast in arrogance, all sorts of boasting is evil. Two types of species have been given to us. One, we will go into such a such city. We will spend time there. We will buy and sell and make profit. Speech one. Speech two. If God will, how many of you like to talk like that? That looks very defeatist. Have you noticed? The other one looks like what? It looks strategic. So then we take. If I start an argument and a discussion with you, and the first thing I say is, subject to the will of God, you are looking at somebody, you look at me as somebody that is not ready to solve your problem. You, you, you get me, Paul. But if I start, there are opportunities opening in Copenhagen. I mean, I just had one friend that went, send me the link, send me the link. Have you noticed that nobody will say, if God will? Yeah, the Bible said, even in the midst of all that thing, your life is like a vapor, which means there are so many things you are building on you can't even control. That's good. Why is it that the second speech of if God will does not occur to us than the first one? It's called crisis. So people just want to come to church and do what? And assert their conscience that they serve God. But the strategy for living eh, is in their hand. Nobody is <laughs> God will. We should God will. Be all you can. Do all you can. If I tell you today, it's okay. Don't worry. How can I tell you? Can you think and tell you God didn't plan that as we can go to you? Not there could be some people that the, the plan of God for them is to exceed dangling. You will then know. You will rather prefer the elements of demand and supply and how much you engage life by yourself. I said, when I go into such a city, I do this, I do this. That the reason why people are not taking things is because they are not expressing the fullness of capacity they have. Now, the question I want to ask. Are we sure that if all of us come in today that we want to devote all our life to profit, that all of us will become so very rich? I know you will tell me there are principles that govern life. And principles does not obey anybody. If anybody engage a principle, whosoever engage a principle, it will work. Is it true? Are there still things that happen in the language that faith does not describe? It's called time and chance. Are you following? Because that one will make you. Because there are lots of people that have become certain things they can never explain how they became it. And there are lots of people too who have who strove to become certain things and they couldn't attain it. If, do, how many of us here believe that promotion comes from God? Hmm. That is God that lifts one and put down the other. No, no. Is it God that lifts one? Are you sure? It's not what they have. You believe it's God that lifts one. So you go to an interview. And the person that is to be interviewed beside you came from Harvard. Or you came from Puto. And they give him the job. Who lifted him? <laughs> so when I come to church, I say, it's God that lifted me. I say, well, pastor, I must give myself the competitive advantage.
How do we boost? Now, the Bible didn't say you cannot go to a city and have an agenda. But it said you must always subject it to one thing that there is a sovereign purpose of God that you must be conscious of. Glory to God. Amos chapter 4, verse 6 to 9. If you don't know that we are in the midst of a famine, I can, I can tell you personally, I can count so many people that have left Nigeria within the last five years. What are they looking for? They like winter. Hmm? And I know how many people are planning to leave. And if you have chance, you will go to such and such a city. Because there are places that seems you can still plan. There are places that even if you have plan, if God does not help you, said, I will give cleanness of feet in all your cities. That's famine. Lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I will tell the rain from you. When there was still three months to the harvest, I made it to rain on one city. I will tell the rain from another city. One part was rained upon. Where it did not rain, and where it did not rain, the part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water. When you are seeing movement, it's because something is dry somewhere. The natural reasons for settlement is that when man finds a, conf- a con- uh, finds water and find what can sustain life, man settles. Immediately you see movement, it's telling you there's famine. It's not because people like white people. They say, I'm coming. Wait for me. I'm, I'm, I'm in control. How many of us still feel God is in control in Nigeria? And that is sufficient enough to give you peace. Some of us are here, not because we want to be here. You know what I'm talking about? If it can happen. I can't even believe our kid wants to go to Canada. He's here. When you came to this church, you were like a missionary. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at 2 Samuel 23, 13 to 17. Let me begin to find a way to tie. Are we still here? Are we here? Then the three of the 30 chief men went down at harvest time and came to David at the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephidim. David was in the stronghold and the garrison of the Philistine. Look at this word. Where is the garrison of the Philistine? It's in what? Bethlehem. Are you following me? David said with longing, Oh, that someone will give me a drink of water from the well which is in Bethlehem by the gate. Wells. Don't just appear. Wells are dug. That means there was a situation of need in a previous generation that demanded that wells should be dug. Are you following? But in the time of David, the situation has intensified. It's not about wells anymore. Right on that well, and that well, is now a garrison. Of Philistine. Which means the battle has intensified. Are you following me? The Philistines did not stop the water. You know, if I don't want to talk to you about the story of wells. You know how much of contention happened to Isaac because of wells. In Genesis 26, with this same Philistine. It will dig, they will cover it. It will dig, they will cover it. For a generation to have been able to dig well, they've, they've pulled through and succeeded. But their children didn't meet a lesser conflict. 
their children met a Philistine that was not, that was ready. They were not just present in Bethlehem. They are garrison. So this time there was now well, but there was still longing. There was longing when there was no water. It led to a digging well. But now there is well, but there is still longing for water. Because the enemy had gone to build a garrison. It is now conflict to draw that water. I'm looking at our times. A lot seems to have advanced, but a lot of contention has been built on it. We are not looking for water. The wells have been dug. But on the wells that have been dug are garrisons of the Philistines that have been built. And to get the water now, you need to break through the garrison. Are you following me? Are you following? So much that the people that have brought the water, David said, this is not water. This is blood. This is blood. This is blood. This is blood. Glory to God. I know the wells have now become garrison. But the God who helped our fathers to dig the wells will give us the waters that the garrisons of the Philistines have been built upon. I thought you would say better amen. I said you would say better amen. I'm going to say first things first. You remember the story of Jacob and Esau? What's the story? I think it's Genesis 25. Rebecca was barren. Isaac prayed. Then she conceived. And they began to, the wrestling started in her. And the Bible told her, God told her, two different nations and you, two different people and you, he separated from you. The older shall serve the younger. The Bible says when they gave birth to them, they were so distinctively different that one was airy. His hair trapped so much blood that it looked red when he came, so they called him Esau, which means red. And the other was a plain man. The problem about life is that people don't like something too plain. You know this thing about if God wills, it's too simple. The other one, I will go, I will do this. Looks more engaging. When you look at Esau and Jacob, Esau's life was more engaging than Jacob's life. Esau was here, Jacob was plain. After that, the next thing they mentioned is what they did. Esau was a hunter. Jacob was a man of death. Nobody respects a man they see at home. He was a remote worker. The Bible told me something. That Isaac loved Esau. Do you know why? Because he ate of his venison. Hallelujah. The earth of what? Of his venison. But the mother loved Jacob. Even you, which one will you love? Who will you love? Hmm? The ones that enter in sin. Now, this is the challenge. Get this. I know you love the field. But you, you can't stay in the field. You have to come home. So the Bible says, one day, Esau came from the field. And isn't it? And when Esau came from the field, what happened? He was hungry. He now knew the value of the man. Problem we have is that when we are looking at what we need, the man of the tent looks like it's not relevant. Somebody come to us and say, God, that word does not look relevant compared to the ones that bring us opportunity. Okay. He said, uh, I want to, eh? 
I want some of the food down there. They are coming from the food. Yeah, don't worry. They are giving about it. They always bad type thing. I'm talking about food. So suddenly the man coming from the food. That knows the man at home. Are you following? Go on. The day they wanted to steal his blessing, the Bible said the mother went inside and took the cloth that he left at home. I know every time the father has always been focused on what is happening in the field. But do you know that what they used to take his blessing, he left it at home. The mother went to take his cloth, put it upon Jacob. His entire eyes was on the field. But what was going to derail him? The same way today, when you are a mighty man of the field, but you, you are coming back to a home. If that home fails, the field is going to, it's, it's going to it's, the meaning of it is going to be lost. That's why a lot of people are under emotional stress. Because no matter what you go do there, you are coming back somewhere. And you can be undone in the tent at home. Are you following me, church? I said we can be undone where? In the tent at home. So I want to appreciate the fact that you are aggressive. I want to appreciate the fact that you are desirous. But there are certain little things we ignore. Relationship. Hmm? There's a little thing. Celebrate people. Are important in your life. They are significant. It is when issues happen, you will discover that some of the people you ignore most are the people you will need most. He came back from the field hungry. That is the day the man in the tent had no food. There's no man. If even some people around you today, they don't sit to fire you. You know, there's a, there's a tendency to always long for people who seem to fire your dream. Just like that, Michael. We are You know, there are some of us here. When you have people like I just have people like this, that, there is natural affinity to because they solve problems. Some people they bring problems. Or if you tell them there is one problem, there is a tendency to say, Oh, yeah, oh, it's okay. These ones are not serious. Let's look for people who can you go and say, Hey, everybody has their place. Sometimes you need people who don't talk serious because they think so far. Some of the people that are always talking five minutes, they are not thinking. They don't think. So, I'm just trying to say, we must understand, we, we, we must not just be drawn by the things that fascinate us alone. To be drawn properly, you must put the first things first. The first thing, you know, after I took the blessing, he ran out. I get it. This um, this is the sum. Um, this is the sum. Um, this, um, this is the first. He ran out. For the first night, he slept out on a pillow of the stone. And he saw this. Do you know what that thing was called? Central to what they are doing. Because when you are asleep, you are unconscious. But do you know what? He was not acting. He couldn't go further. He couldn't go behind. But somebody stood before him and said, I am the God of your father. Which means, I have been walking before you came into consciousness. And he said, I am the God of Isaac. This was how you were in your mother's womb when I made the decision. And that decision is what I'm enacting again. I will go with you wherever you go. And I will bring you back. And this place is... And he said, if God will go with you and bring you back, then I will make this place the house of God. The Romans chapter 9, because I don't have... When the children have not done anything good or bad, God said, what God was doing in Genesis 28 was reenacting the position Jacob was in his mother's womb when he made the decision. Somebody say, first things first. I wish we know that there is a God who, has, who stood above all 
decisions before they were ever made. And he made them in our favor. Are you following? I, that day he was, he was a what? Uh, somebody that stole the blessing. You didn't discover God did not even make any reference. Because what God was saying had nothing to do with what he has done or what he did not do. What God was saying had all to do with what God decided. Are you following me? How many men today know first thing first? Before we begin to talk, say, we'll go to that city. We'll make where? A more strategy. Okay. God. Say God. The first discussion is not, it's not few. It's God. Do you know why? Because except the Lord build, those that labor, they labor in vain. Your labor will not be in vain. Ah, you are not saying the amen very well. Why is Sheona help me? I said your labor will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who are you first? Let me talk to you. When it got to Laban's house, eh? The first thing that gave him entrance into Laban's house was not his key. What gave him entrance to Laban's house? It was the son of Rebecca, the sister of Laban. Then after staying for some time, Laban said, you, you can't stay with me this long. I need to teach you something. So what, I, what he gave him was consequent first upon who he is. There are many people who have lost who they are for what they do. But the first thing that gives you the access is who you are. And who are you? You are made in the image of God. That should first settle in your subconscious. And it is on that foundation that what you do. Are you following me? Now, I'm not investigating what you do. Sometimes in his description with Laban, he told Laban, you know how many years I was in the field with your animals. He said, the, the dew came upon me. The frost came upon me. The night came upon me. Everything that was lost, I had to restore it. So he was a diligent man. But he must not forget, the first entrance into Laban's house was not your ski. It was who you are. Are you following me? Are you following me? It happened with Moses too. You remember in Exodus, is it chapter 2? Moses got to the well of Midian and he saw the shepherds pushing away the daughters of Jethro and he helped them and what happened? And fed their sheep and watered them. Then when they got home, the father said, why did you come home very early? They said, an Egyptian helped us. And he said, you left the man. You, left, you don't leave such a man. The Bible said, when he brought him in and Moses was content to live with the man, number one, and the man gave him his daughter. The first thing, what gave Moses access into Jethro's house was the person of Moses. I want you to lose your person. Are you following me? In the midst of your demands. Because there are too many men who have become a shadow of themselves in the name of meeting demands. They are not compassionate anymore. Are you following me? They are not blameless anymore. They are always under pressure. Anything goes as long as it meets their needs. No! Moses entered the house of, of Jethro because he helped the daughters. Hey, God is sending you as helpers. Then when he helped, they brought him home. They gave him food. Then he was content to live with the man. That was the consequence of his person. And he gave him what? Zipporah's daughter to Moses. And that one gave him children. And Moses said, I've been a stranger. I've been a stranger in a foreign land. See the, see the, what? But when you deal with guys today, who we are, In those days when there was no king in Israel, Judges 17 and Judges 18, every man did what was right in his eyes. There was this man called a Levi. He 
became a Levite for a for, for a, an idol, a priest. And when the the the, the Canaanites wanted to take him, they said, "How did they first engage him? Let, let's look at how they engage him. Because I don't want us to reduce our person to what we do and what we have." Two scriptures, Judges seventeen, verse. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Micah said to him, Dwell with me. Be a father and a priest to me. I will give you ten shekels of silver per year, a suit of clothes, and your sustenance. So the Levite, what determined what the Levite did? What he do? What he had? I will give you ten shekels of silver. Suit of clothes and your sustenance. He said, ah. Now he did not look at the fact whether that thing was right or wrong. What he only looked at is the opportunity. And like the old reverse said, the type of wife that is uh, dancing you used to attract. Somebody will dance more than you to distract. So when you attract her with dancing, she will be distracted with dancing. So a whole tribe came to this man in Judges 18. And in verse 18, because of time, let me just jump. Let me go to. Okay, verse 18. When this went into Micah's house, they took the calf, they made the effort, the household eyes on the molded image, the priest said to them, what are you doing? And they said to him, be quiet, put your hand over your mouth and come to us. Be a father and a priest for us. It's better for you to be the priest. Is it better for you to be the priest of a household of one man or that you should be a priest of a tribe and a family in Israel? So the priest's heart was glad. They took the effort. They were taking it before. He was not the one taking it. He took the effort, the household that they carved and took his place among the people. They also told him, you are bought, you can be bought again at a higher price. This person, don't question. Everybody just did what was right in their heart. Nobody said, if God wills, there was no superintendence of God in anybody's lifestyle anymore and decision. I don't know whether you get this word. No superintendence of God. First things first. God. Men must get used to talking about God. You hear what I'm saying? When we are talking, we must be used to the fact that we sit down together and we are studying, we are praying. It's not every time we sit down together. Are you following me? Your best friends must be people of faith. Two. Not just people of opportunities. Uh, are you following me? Are you following me? Because you see, those plain men like Jacob, they carry great destinies. And that, where that destiny is decided is by God. First things first. God. The first things first. God. I didn't know whether you get that point. I said first things first. God. I said first things first. God. When we sit down together and interact, the whole of man don't be. It's not it's not that we are being psychedelic. It's not that we are being over spiritual. We are being men. We know one person that can determine whether what we do fails or does not fail or works. And we are conscious of him. Are you following me? I will give him that place. Seek him first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. I, I don't know whether you get this message. And all other things shall be. First things first. God. I'm not saying migration. I'm not saying show me the way to Canada. God. God. Do you know why? God is the only one that has the blueprint of everybody's success. What will work for you is not what will work for you. Are you following me? So the, if we have to unearth the blueprint of our destinies, it's in the hand of who? Of God. May God build a house for you. Two scriptures, stand on your feet, let's pray. Ruth 4, 11 and 12. 
And in Philippians 2, 12 to 14. I pray that who you are will stand tall above what you do. You are not saying the amen. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. Friend of God. I am a friend of God. Friend of God, he calls me friend. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Oh yeah. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Hallelujah. And all the people who are at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman who is coming to your house, like Rachel and Leah, the two who built the house of Israel. Who built? Rachel and Leah built. But the Lord make. You can't build what the Lord does not make you. Do you know why? It was if God was not involved in Rachel and Leah, it cannot be called a building process. It would have been a scattering process because it was a process of contention. It was a process of crisis. But because somebody else was pretending over it, they became builders. Are you following me? Someone said, first things first, God. So that man didn't say, I have two wives, so I'm going to have a tribe, a nation. No, it was God that was working, using the wives they had to build a nation. Lord, take what is in me and use it to build your intention. Use it to build your intention. First this, I know who is at work. It's not my strength. It's not my wisdom. It's the Lord. You're not praying the way I want you to pray. Who is that God to you? Who are you? What do you do? Many a times, what we do is the first thing to us. Tonight, we are learning to submit to his sovereign power, his sovereign rule. He's the one that holds our breath. And because he holds our breath, he holds our purposes. And he's going to use it to build his plan. He's going to use it to build his purposes. He's going to use it to build his intention. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are building your purpose because you are working in us both to will and to do of your good intentions. You are working in us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Sometimes when we face the crisis, we face marital pressures, emotional pressures, we face financial pressures. We say, the first thing we the first thing we go to is ourselves. Oh, how do you do it? What works for me is not what works for you. Let God build your house. When God builds your house, you will dwell in a house where there is bitter leaf, where there will be love. You don't get what I'm saying? Because God is building. Oh God, walk in me, both to will and to do of your good intention. Pray for yourself tonight. Beyond your wisdom, let God go at work. Let the Spirit of God begin to walk. He knows what you need to do to change your story and to change your face. Where you are now. He knows it. 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 Marabayan. Marabayan de Boshu Kalabayende. Rambalaba. Who are you? I want you to pray that God will work on your personality. That you become a gentle, a willing, a loving person. I know we are under pressures. And these pressures are hitting into our base. 
They are affecting our love life. They are affecting our patience. They are affecting our willingness. They are affecting our liberality. But none of these things must be allowed to take them in the name of Jesus. You must be liberal. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Because of time. Philippians 2, 12 to 14. Let's stop there tonight. Philippians 2, verse 12 to 14. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Yes, continue. That you may become blameless, harmless, children of God. What, what the ultimate thing God wants us to become is what? Children of God. Without fault. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as light. God will not take us from the midst of this crisis. He is going to only make us light in the midst of this crisis. Are you following me? And to be light, you cannot dwell in the territory of complaining and disputing. Too many of us have spent so much of our life complaining about life. Why am I here? What am I doing? Just engage what God has given you and let him bring out of it what he can do. If you are not in Copai, again, you are in Ibadan. Don't be angry. Do all things without disputing and complaining. But shine as light in the midst of a dark and perverse generation. Say, Father, in the midst of this crisis, we shine as light in the name of Jesus. We, re we reflect the children of God. We become the children of God. That's what we are in the name of Jesus. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Thank you, Lord. That you become blameless and harmless. Don't become crooked. Don't become a liar. Don't become a desperado. Become a blameless and harmless child of God without fault. Without fault. Because you know there is a God that is taking care of you. You have a father. Even though you are in the midst of intense crisis. You are not like Saul. That will force yourself to do what you don't want to do. Just because of pressure. You wait on God. You know he has not forgotten you. You will shine as light in the midst of a dark and perverse generation. Thank you Lord. Please give us that hymn again. Let's sing the first verse and the, and the chorus. Hallelujah. The King. Lord, Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark. Is shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free. By your truth, you now bring us shine on me. Sing it to God. Shine on me. Hey, shine, Jesus, shine. Feel this land with the Father's glory. Spirit place, set us on fire. Flow, river, flow, pardon nations with grace and mercy. Set for your word, Lord. The call us one more time. Shine, Jesus, shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. Feel this land. Feel this land. Spirit, place. Set my heart on fire. Glory, the fire. Lord of nations. Lord of nations. With praise, sense what you want. What you want. Oh, no. hey. Sense what you want. Sense what you want. And the peace of the Christ.
Jesus and your blood. Make us children of God of this generation. For sons of God in the midst of death of our generation. Say what your word of Lord Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we refuse to make our making to come from the hand of our pressures. Our making will not come from the hand of our crisis. We are going to be children of God, harmless, blameless. In the midst of a perverse and crooked generation, we shine as lights. Send forth your word. The word of rest, the word of direction, the word of peace, the word of victory. Send forth your word. Into every heart tonight, let them go with a word. Send forth your word. Let there be light. Light all over this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. How many of us are blessed by